welcome all. The music for Mass is found on page 5 of the Sunday Bulletin. Please stand as we begin our prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning. Today is the 15th Sunday in Ordinary Time. It also happens to be the feast of two of my favorite saints, St. Louis and Zelie Martin, the parents of St. Therese. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does it honor through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down, and do not return there, till they have watered the earth, making it fruitful and fertile, giving seed to the one who sows, and bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are as nothing compared with the glory to be revealed to us. For creation awaits with eager expectation the revelation of the children of God. For creation was made subject to futility, not of its own accord, but because of the one who subjected it, in hope that creation itself would be set free from slavery to corruption and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that all creation is groaning in labor pains even until now. And not only that, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves as we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. On that day, Jesus went out of the house and sat down by the sea. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat down, and the whole crowd stood along the shore. And he spoke to them at length in parables, saying, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground where it had little soil. It sprang up at once because the soil was not deep, and when the sun rose, it was scorched, and it withered for lack of roots. Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it. But some feed, seed fell on rich soil and produced fruit, a hundred or sixty or thirty-fold. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The disciples approached him and said, Why do you speak to them in parables? He said to them in reply, Because knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven has been granted to you, but to them it has been, not been granted. To anyone who has, more will be given, and he will grow rich. From anyone who has not, even what he has will be taken away. This is why I speak to them in parables, because they look but do not see, and hear but do not listen or understand. Isaiah's prophecy is fulfilled in them, which says, you shall indeed hear, but not understand. You shall indeed look, but never see. Gross is the heart of his, this people. They will hardly hear with their ears. They have closed their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts 
and be converted, and I heal them. But blessed are your eyes because they see, and your ears because they hear. Amen, I say to you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see, but did not see it and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. Hear then the parable of the sower. The seed sown on the path is the one who hears the word of the kingdom without understanding it. And the evil one comes and steals away what was sown to his heart. The seed sown on rocky ground is the one who hears the word and receives it at once with joy, but he has no root and lasts only for a time. When some tribulation or persecution comes because of the word, he immediately falls away. The seed sown among the thorns is the one who hears the word, but then world anxiety and the lure of riches choke the word and it bears no fruit. But the seed sown on rich soil is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields a hundred or sixty or thirty-fold. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. St. Paul says in our second reading, we know that all creation is groaning in labor pains, even until now. Labor pains. Yes, labor pains. We've only felt the first tremors. On the threshold of his passion, Jesus told his apostles, when a woman is in labor, she's in anguish because her hour has arrived. But when she has given birth to a child, She no longer remembers the pain because of her joy that a child has been born into the world. So you also are now in anguish, but I will see you again, and your hearts will rejoice, and no one will take your joy away from you. We can apply these words to the one holy Catholic and apostolic church because the church has now entered the time of her passion. Just as the hour of Christ's passion came, just as the hour of the childbearing woman arrives, So also the hour has arrived for the church to be crucified like her divine spouse, Jesus Christ. It is important to keep this big picture perspective because we are in the last times of this declining era and the sufferings ahead are very great. But don't be overwhelmed. Don't lose faith, hope, charity in the days ahead because everything has been foretold by our Blessed Mother. God is in control. God will prove victorious. Evil should not prevail. And the kingdom of Satan will be utterly destroyed. We must not judge by appearances. Appearances. Evil has grasped for power and media coverage all over the world. It is precisely when Satan will, be, will seem to be universal victor that Our Lady will crush his head. And we will enter, or whoever's alive at that time, into, new, into the new era, the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, a peace that the world and the Church has never known before, the time of the Catholic Church's greatest splendor and purity and radiance, a time where God's will will be done on earth as it is done in heaven by the angels and saints as we pray in the Our Father. We hear in the book of Revelation, chapter 12, a great sign appeared in the sky, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of 12 stars. She was with child and wailed aloud in pain as she labored to give birth. Then another sign appeared in the sky. It was a huge red dragon with seven heads and 10 horns, and on its heads were seven diadems. We are in the greatest spiritual battle of all time. St. Joseph, Our Lady, St. Michael, all the angels and saints, the souls in purgatory, 
and all the humble disciples of Jesus, those who keep his commandments and pray to him and live for him, verse the red dragon, Satan and the demons, the damned human souls, and whoever belongs to Satan through mortal sin on this earth. The woman was with child and wailed aloud in pain as she labored to give birth. Here we have those birth pains again. Who's the woman? Both Our Lady and the Church. The birth pains do not refer to Bethlehem. They refer to Calvary. It is part of the dogma of Mary's perpetual virginity that she had no birth pains at Bethlehem. Jesus Christ came forth miraculously from a closed womb, like light passing through a crystal, manifesting the Christ child's divinity. He is God. The birth pains refer to Calvary. Mary gives birth to us spiritually in the person of the beloved disciple as she watches her firstborn son, the only child of her womb, die on the cross. For Jesus says to her, Woman, behold your son, thereby entrusting the beloved disciple who represents you and I to our blessed mother, to her care. We can also apply Revelation 12, 2 to the church. The woman was with child and wailed aloud in pain as she labored to give birth. Have you ever heard the phrase, the blood of the martyrs is the seed of Christians? The leitmotif of the cross as the tree of life is inscribed in the very core of the history of salvation. Sufferings endured for love of Jesus Christ bear fruit in the conversion of sinners, the salvation of souls, the relief and release of the souls in purgatory so that they can go to heaven, and the transformation of the entire world. We know that all creation is groaning in labor pains even until now. It is only through the labor pains of tribulation that the church and the world will be purified and that we will enter the era of peace. For Our Lady of Fatima prophesied this coming era in the end, my immaculate heart will triumph and a period of peace will be granted to the world. We now turn to the first verse of our second reading where St. Paul says, Brothers and sisters, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are as nothing, are as nothing compared with the glory to be revealed for us. He's talking about heaven, the beatific vision. Herein we see the essential connection between cross and glory, sufferings endured out of love for Jesus and the eternal crown of glory reserved in heaven for the elect. Compared to eternity, what is time? It is a blink, a nanosecond. But even this image, this analogy, this comparison is wrong. Time ends. Eternity doesn't. Who can compare what, what is finite to what is infinite in duration and intensity? The greatest sufferings on earth and the greatest delights on earth are nothing compared to the eternal fire of hell and the eternal bliss of heaven. I look at the vast majority of our brothers and sisters today and I pity them. I grieve over their ignorance, their lack of faith, their lack of prayer, their fear of death, their neglect of the soul. How pitiful. We're like scared animals caught in a cage of fear and panic and self-serving desperation all because we fear a little virus that cannot touch the soul and can only harm the body, and even then it only rarely brings death. Yet we lose charity, we lose love, we lose joy, we lose just being human. I'd rather live one day with joy and love than a thousand days in a state of panic and fear and depressing anxiety, which is the fruit of the evil one. Our desperation shows our total lack of faith. We live as if God doesn't exist, as if heaven's a fable. We try to make this life heaven, and in so doing it becomes hell, because we have a disordered attachment to passing things, 
longevity, health, money, security, assets, comfort. We come to Holy Communion to receive the living God, Jesus Christ himself. And we're thinking about protecting ourselves and our health. Is Mass and Holy Communion about you and me, about man? No, it's about God. It's about him. It's about revering and thanking the Savior, Jesus Christ, the Lord. No wonder our Holy Communions are fruitless, or even worse, sacrilegious, because we're more concerned about the body than the soul, more concerned about protection from germs than freedom from sin. Only sin can damn us. More concerned about remaining in time than preparing for eternity. More concerned about man than God. More filled with the spirit of the Antichrist than the spirit of truth. Love of God must be first. Otherwise, there is no charity towards your neighbor. Take away the vertical love of God and the horizontal falls to pieces. Look at our country. The supreme fulfillment of this depravity will be the Antichrist, who will arrogate to himself the place reserved only for God. Then you will see the depravity to which man can descend, the hellish control and violence that can take over the world that has rejected God. For those who want to be saved, we must fight and oppose the Antichrist and his false miracles and deceiving wonders. As we approach the time of the great tribu tribulation, we must repeat what St. Paul says, I consider that the sufferings of the present time are as nothing compared with the glory to be revealed for us. It will be a time of persecution and martyrdom of the elect. So get ready, you cannot say you were not forewarned. It is not a fearful thing if we are living for Jesus for he can do all things in those who trust in him. As St. John says, 1 John 4:18, there is no fear in love, for perfect love casts out all fear. Do you want to hear what St. Therese says of these times in that beautiful book, Story of a Soul? She says, when thinking of the torments which will be the lot of Christians at the time of the Antichrist, I feel my heart leap with joy and I would that these torments be reserved for me, Jesus, Jesus, if I wanted to write all my desires, I would have to borrow your book of life, for in it I reported all the actions of all the saints, and I would accomplish all of them for you, for Jesus, out of love. It's as if the saints in heaven are envious of our lot to be on earth in these, these times of distress, because the greater the sufferings, the greater the cross, the greater the manifestation of love for God, for Jesus, for Mary, for souls, as long as we persevere in the faith. As it was at the Passion of Christ, so it will be during the Passion and Crucifixion of the True Church, who was faithful, mostly women, and one apostle who stood with the woman. It's not in us to be faithful, at the time of greatest trial. It's found in her. She doesn't flinch. She doesn't swoon. She doesn't take her eyes up Jesus. She doesn't even look at Satan and get scared. She doesn't take one step back or down from the cross. During her years of public ministry, she remained in the background in humility, prayer, self-effacement, but during his passion, she steps forward to show how fidelity does not retreat from the cross. She is the virgin most faithful. She is the perseverance and courage of the just. The beloved disciple was faithful at the foot of the cross to his crucified redeemer and master because he stood with the woman and looked to her eyes, her hand, and her heart for support. She is our consolation in this valley of tears. As we say in the Salve Regina, the Holy Queen, she is our life, our sweetness, our hope. Those will be found standing who stand with her. Those will be found loving, persevering in charity who love with her. 
Those will be found enduring and persevering who endure and persevere with her. Those will be, will be found faithful who are faithful to her. All the rest will fall away, will betray Jesus, will depart from the truth. It really does matter whether you consecrate yourself to Our Lady and pray and live the daily rosary. In the words of St. Maximilian Maria Kolbe, whose relic is in this altar, modern times are dominated by Satan and will be more so in the future. The conflict with hell cannot be engaged by men, even the most clever. The Immaculata alone has from God the promise of victory over Satan. However, assumed into heaven, the Mother of God now requires our cooperation. She seeks souls who will consecrate themselves entirely to her, who will become in her hands effective instruments for the defeat of Satan and the spreading of God's kingdom upon earth. Heaven is only obtained by the way of the cross. Don't fear the cross, fear sin. The cross brings us to heaven, sin brings us to hell. Love and adore the cross, embrace the cross, hate and abhor sin, repent of sin. Our Lady will teach you all you need to know, all you need to do if you wish to be saved. She's not hard to love, she really is incredible, the most pure, the most beautiful, the most loving and lovable and holy woman. It's up to you to decide. As for me and my house, we will love Our Lady and so most love and serve the Lord. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Having been nourished by the word of God, let us now entrust to the Lord our needs and those of our world. For catechists and all who teach the truth, May they faithfully sow the seeds of God's word and tend its growth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our world, torn apart by the ravages of prejudice and hate, may seeds of understanding and compassion be sown so that unity and peace can be restored. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For farmers throughout the world and all who work in the fields, May God prosper the work of their hands and bring about a bountiful harvest. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For scientists, health professionals, and public officials, and all who are serving the common good during this difficult and uncertain time, may they be filled with wisdom and understanding. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they be welcomed into heaven by our Heavenly Father, especially Euphemia Martel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of never-failing love and compassion, 
You provide us with all we need to grow and thrive in the life of discipleship. Hear our prayers that in studying your word and living lives of service to you and our neighbor, we might come to life everlasting. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Great brothers and sisters, and my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look upon the offerings of the Church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim.
To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Felipe, our Bishop, our Bishop Emeritus Victor, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. And we eat this bread and drink this cup. We proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants, and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne 
by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servant Euphemia, Martel, and all the faithful departed who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, and to their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that she should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. 